coding made easy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to your next SFML 2.0 tutorial. And in this tutorial, uh, we are going to be doing a tutorial that a lot of people, a lot of people, have been asking me for. And this is going to be loading tile maps. Now, for every single other tutorial series I've made of uh, loading tile maps, and they were like the exact same thing, just different variants, just because of the uh, the different APIs. Now, because SFML is uh, 2.0 is similar to SFML 1.6. It wouldn't be and it wouldn't be relatively different um, to do it from SFML 1.6 to SFML 2.0. You could watch 1.6 tutorials and figure out how to do it in 2.0 relatively easy. So what I've decided to do is just go the make the approach a bit different. Now uh, this tutorial is this uh, these tutorials are gonna span probably three four tutorials. I'll probably do an easy, medium, intermediate, uh, uh, easy, intermediate, uh, hard, and advanced, or something like that, like I did with the other tutorial series. And um, and yeah, so you'll get to see different ways to load uh, tile maps depending on your uh, programming ability. So let's start off by uh, just including our, our graphics. Remember to always do a forward slash just because. Um, it is universal. Um, say if you're going to program on Linux or something, uh, it will work correctly. Uh, we need to include uh, the IO stream. Uh, we need to include the file stream, and we're going to include C type, C C type, or you could say C type dot H. Either way, uh, for the C type for the C functions or the C includes you can either put their name dot H or you can just put C in front of them and then put the type in in there okay so we're gonna be loading our text um, our maps from text files now why text files well C++ is a compile language and because whenever we make a change it has to keep compiling whenever you're making a game you're obviously or most likely going to be making frequent changes to your map or so on and so forth right and you're not going to want to have to recompile every single time because it takes up a lot of time while programming so if you do something in an external text file whenever you edit it in the text file the actual program doesn't have to recompile and therefore you have faster compile times also by separating the content if you have a designer or somebody else or say a time map editor or something uh, you can have the map code separate the map file separate than the actual internal code so nobody can actually destroy it so no designers or anything can destroy it anyways so let's begin uh, we're gonna be using the if stream I'm going to call it open file, uh, it's just a common name I use, and I'm I'm going to open up map.txt. Now, um, this is, these are my tiles right here, okay? Uh, my tiles are uh, green, red, blue, and, and purple tiles. And if we look at my map, uh, my map specifies the name of our tile, or what the location of it, and the file name. And what uh, this specifies is our map, and we will get to this in just a second. So my map is called map1.txt, and you can copy this if you would like. Um, maybe I will just upload this this text file as well um, on my website when I upload it, so you guys can have it with. Sorry, I had to pause for a second, but yeah. So let's continue with our our code. Um, so we have loaded our map dot text and we just want to check if it's open and if it is open uh, then we will um, loop while we're not at the end of the file okay now since we load well, since we get our, our tiles or our tile location or, or whatever at the beginning of the file what we want to do is actually get that information so what we're gonna do is make an SF texture and we'll say tile texture and we'll make an SF sprite and we'll say tiles and right here we'll just make an std string we'll call this tile location 
and we'll say open file tile location and we'll say tile texture load from file we'll get from the tile location and we'll set our tiles to our tile texture so what this did right here is that it's just gonna get our line it's going to where it's gonna find that file and then it's gonna load that file and put it into the sprite that should not be relatively hard so what this what we're gonna do now is that um the way that the file stream works is that whenever we um search through a file it it's the delimiter is the space so it will get this and then it will get these and it will get this and that so anything that is not a number what we're going to do is that we're going to like say since this is a number this since this isn't a number we're going to say that is it is nothing we shouldn't draw anything for it for the things that are numbers what we're, the numbers represent which tile we should draw so this represents uh the tile number in the x coordinate and this represents the tile number in the y coordinate so this says tile zero one so right here if we look right here on the x coordinate this is the first tile this is zero and this is if we go from zero one this is tile number one and the y coordinate so on that specific tile on that specific area of our map it should draw this blue tile right here and then if we get right here we do one zero so that's one in the x coordinate zero on the y coordinate so one this is zero one and this is zero on the y coordinate so we draw the red tile if we go over here uh we're gonna draw tile one one so we go zero one which is um one in the rec um in the x coordinates and then we go zero one which is the w purple is whatever in the y coordinates and then we will get that and we will draw the purple square and then for zero zero we will end up drawing this green square right here hopefully that was not too confusing for you guys so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a vector 2i and we are going to call this our map and uh, we're gonna make it a hundred by hundred because we don't know how large it's gonna be right um there are ways to figure it out based on dynamic like dynamically assigning it and such which we will learn in other tutorial in later tutorials but for now we're just gonna set it to a hundred by hundred we'll set another vector to i we'll call this load counter and we will say and you know what we'll just leave it like that and we'll just say s effector to i so we're going to set load counter equal to zero zero okay um that should be fine set this to i okay so while it is open now now we want to um do some stuff so what we're going to do now is we're going to make a string and we'll we'll and first of all since we're using strings we should include the string clash just to be safe so we're gonna say uh, we'll just say str and then we're gonna say open file str then we're gonna make two chars we're gonna say char x is equal to str0 and y is equal to str2 now what does this mean well, if we look in this file right here, it uh, the string contains three characters, um, the x, comma, whatever. So whatever value it is, comma, whatever value it is. This is just assuming that we have three uh, values. So um, yeah, like so. So what we want to do is when we say uh, char x is equal to str0, it means we're getting this value right here. And then when we say uh, char y is equal to str2, uh, we're getting this value. So this is str0, this is str1, and this is str2. So we're just getting um, those values like so. And if you don't want, if that confuses you, then you can by all means just remove the comma. But I just put the comma there just to separate it, just to make it uh, more readable in my opinion. So 
now that we've got our x and y now we want to check if they're digits if they're not digits then we want to we don't want to do we want to set them to a negative number so what we're going to do is we're going to say if not is digit and that's that comes from the c type uh include so if not is digit x or not is digit y then what we're going to do is we're going to say map load counter dot x load counter dot y is equal to sf vector 2 i and we'll just set them to negative 1 negative 1 else we'll say map load counter x load counter dot y is equal to sf vector 2 i and we're going to say x minus in single quote 0 y minus single quote zero now um i know this might look a bit confusing to you but don't let it confuse you so i'm going to explain it briefly so what this is going to do is it's going to check if it's a number if uh, either one of them is not a number then we want to set our current mat value equal to negative one which means we shouldn't draw any tile for it okay we shouldn't draw anything for it so right in here this is probably going to confuse a lot of people so let me help break it down to you so this is how um this is our map and it's um our map is two arrays a uh, hundred by a hundred so we need to specify where in our map array we should actually store our value so this is where load counter x and load counter y come in so right now they're both zero zero as we specified up here so it's gonna say that um, in map zero zero store this vector to i, and then we're gonna increase the load counter x and so on and so forth, and it's going to, in a sense, the array is going to look just like we have it in here, okay? So the array is gonna look just like we have it in here, and it's gonna lay it out, and then we're gonna be able to do certain stuff with it, okay? So um, we, I will explain this more in depth after. So now that it, if if they both are digits, then we set our map zero zero or whatever our values in there equal to uh, s of vector two i x minus zero in quotes y minus zero in quotes. Why did I do that? Well, uh, chars can be converted into integers but they converted it into integers based on the ascii table now i believe the number zero and ascii is in in a decimal format is equal to 48 so if say let's say x is equal let's say x is a digit but x is equal to like that if we were to convert it to an int or something like that or we were supposed to say like if we did like int zero what this would do is that it would convert this value equal to 48 it would convert it to its actual ascii value we don't want the ascii value we actually want we want the actual numerical value so for example if x is equal to zero right um if x is equal to this so if x is equal to zero this is basically saying take 48 subtract 48 and that will give us the value zero let's say x is equal to one this value in quotes in the ascii table is equal to 49 so it's going to say 49 subtract 48 that will give us the value one and that will give us the the, the absolute value of uh, what we actually want